All right, let's see what we've got. Um, hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk to you again. Vision softly creeping. It's left its seeds while I was sleeping. Okay, not bad. Good, good, good. Well, let's see what else we can do here. Um, how about this? But darkness never explained. But once gained, darkness never gained. Uh, okay, my shadows vanished from this plane of existence. Oh, wow. Okay, and then the darkness in between. See them in silence. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, oh, hello. Um, hi, my name is Mark Riddell, and um, I was just playing around with one of my AI systems to try to generate some lyrics for uh, Simon and Garfunkel's The Sound of Silence. So one of these is generated by humans, and one of these is generated by my computer program. OK, you can probably figure out which one is which. Uh, that system that produced the lyrics to this song is something I call Weird AI Yankovic, which is a it's really hard to tell what this is saying in a sans serif font. Okay, here we go. Weird AI Yankovic, which is an AI system that I developed for generating parody lyrics. So let's talk a little bit briefly about what parody lyrics are. So parody is one of the most important forms of free expression in Western culture and the United States. It's a protected form of language. Uh, it's used for entertainment used for political expression and many other purposes. Parody lyrics is a form of parody in which you replace a song's lyrics with a new set of lyrics that are sung to the same music. And the reason why this is a particularly powerful form of, of free expression is because we hear this music, we hear this tune, we're very familiar with it, but then the words are different and that draws our attention to the words and the meaning behind the words. And I think when we all think of parody lyrics, there's a very famous um, musical artist that uh, made this genre very, very popular. And um, OK, so I'm blanking on his name right now, but, but I'm sure it'll come back to me later. OK, well, what I wanted to do was I wanted to turn this parody lyrics into an AI challenge. And so we thought of it like this. We know what a song is. We know a, we're given a song. We know how many lines per verse. We know how many syllables per line. And we know what the rhyming scheme is. And if we know that, then we have a set of constraints. And can we use that set of constraints to, con to generate a thematically consistent new set of lyrics? So here's kind of what a, a schema might look like. This is for the sound of silence that we just saw earlier, right? It's seven lines in the first verse. Uh, the first line has seven uh, syllables. The second line has eight syllables, so on and so forth. And the rhyme scheme is A, B, or sorry, A, A, B, B, C, C. And then maybe we want the seventh line to end with the word silence. Okay, so this is like the set of constraints that now a language model has to conform to. And importantly, we don't have to generate the music. The music is given to us. And if we meet all these constraints, the syllables, the rhyme scheme, we should just be able to sing the song um, and have it fit to the music. So some technical stuff that we had to do. Uh, so first of all, we have a near rhyme dictionary. Uh, we need to be able to produce rhyming words or near rhyming words. That's great. Once we choose rhyming words, we need to make sure they show up in the the lyrics in each line. To do that, we generate backwards. So we'd start with a rhyming word and we work our way to the beginning of the line. That way we're sure that the, the line, the, the words that we want to appear are actually going to appear. Uh, it, but it turns out it's actually really kind of hard to figure out how to generate a bunch of words that fit a syllable schema. So what we do is we generate many, many different candidate lines for every single line of the song. And then we take the best one to promote for it. And then we rhyme with that. Um, and this is a form of a creative generation process that is known as generate and test, which is to say we have a language model that doesn't really know what it's doing, doesn't know what the task is. So we just use it to produce a lot of material. And then we use rules to figure out which ones are correct and which ones are wrong. OK, so I don't want to spend too much time here. I just want to leave you with a few more thoughts. Um, we are using large pre-trained language models. These are generally hard to control. So this is a control problem. And while there are many ways of doing control of language models, we were looking very specifically at the sampler. The sampler is an often forgotten part of text generation. And whereas we often use very simple sampling techniques. What we've done here is we've made a very complicated sampling technique when combined with the generate and test kind of 
modality of, of doing creation turns out to work to be a particularly good combination. And then the last thing I want to kind of mention is that um, this whole idea of generating lyrics, uh, parody lyrics, uh, is really about fault tolerance. So look, when when we have to do parody, we're, we end up with very awkward language because a person has to produce words to fit to these really overly strenuous set of constraints. So people fail all the time. And it's hilarious when people fail, but it's also brilliant when people succeed. And we take this kind of same mentality to AI system. We get to laugh at the AI system when it fails because we expect it to fail. But when it works, it, it's, it's just kind of a cool sort of thing. So this creativity has been a very good way of um, kind of experimenting with text generation systems. And I think, you know, so I strongly encourage everyone to, to kind of spend some time looking at these sorts of things. Um, and, and one last thing. Did I mention karaoke mode? Okay. I'm out. <laughs>